Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Uh, the Christmas is over, but you know, the, the Christmas feel is still there. So I'll maintain the Christmas tree, but my messages will start going somewhere else, apart from Christmas. I'm sure your Christmas was nice, and your Christmas was peaceful, and your Christmas was blissful. Um, I'm sure your Christmas was blessed. Well, mine was blessed, and mine was blissful, and mine was peaceful. Um, I'm still recovering from the fatigue of Christmas. My topic for today, I like to call room for everything. This morning, I'm looking at a particular woman in the Bible. Her name is Rahab. And I'm looking at the uh, various things that she, um, uh, she embodies, especially for the year that is coming ahead. And I want us to um, go with her and uh, look at her characteristics. I'm fascinated by, by the fact that of all the people who are living in Jericho, of all the people who are living in the city of Jericho, only just her and her family were saved. In actual fact, it was she who was the main person that was brought out of Jericho. And um, I, I'm fascinated by the story that you'll be very surprised in, in, in Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 to 19, it, it, it reads out the, the, the story, Joshua chapter 5 and Joshua chapter 6, reads out the story of this woman called Rahab, and I am extremely fascinated by her. Now, the Bible said something about her that uh, makes it, why was she alone, I mean, picked up, and her family picked up? And I'm very, very interested. In, are you aware that the whole battle of Jericho, I mean, the walls coming down, the, everything that took place in Jericho, the main purpose of God was the rescue of this woman. The reason for the Israelites going around walls seven times and the reason for the Israelites, I mean, um, uh, blowing trumpet and all those other things that they were doing. You do, are you aware that it was just for Rahab? Because God destroys the city for what? God, God, God wiped out the city for what? And, and, and what, the more I look at it, the more I'm fascinated by the fact that just this woman, she was the reason. And I'm fascinated because later on I found out that Rahab became one of the great grandmothers of Jesus Christ. Rahab became one of the great grandmothers of Jesus Christ. So I'm looking at this. So all that God was doing for the destruction of the walls of Jericho, for the pulling down those walls, for the Israelites going around the walls seven times and all the things that came with it, it was just because God wanted a particular womb. It was because God wanted a particular womb. And in the following um, pages, as we begin to go through the following days, we we'll begin to see what were the qualities that God was looking for. Why was God so much interested? And I found to my greater shock that in Hebrews chapter 11, when God was talking about his hall of faith, or God was commending people who had impressed him with their faith, Amongst them was this Rahab. Rahab's name was in the list. And that blew me out. I mean, God interested in Rahab. Now, you'd be very, very surprised. Who was Rahab? A prostitute. Rahab was a prostitute. Yet God chose her womb. This is a woman who uh, was at the service of men. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. And yet... God said, this is who I want. What will make a prostitute impress God? And Hebrews chapter 11 holds God's uh, hall of fame for faith. God's faith hall of fame. And Rahab was there. So something about the faith of Rahab, something about Rahab's positioning, something about Rahab's character, something about this then made sure that Rahab stood tall. And I'm going to hit this one and then we'll move on to the next ones as, as the days go by. You know what Rahab means? Rahab means room on all sides. I have room for everything. 
in this, on this earth. I have room for everything. And I'm impressed. I'm, I was impressed with her. She had had room for every sort of man. And this time she said to herself, God is about to do something in my life. God is about to do something for humanity. I need to have room for God. So many times we, we find people, you've drawn up your New Year's list, you've drawn up your New Year's resolution, you'd be very surprised that there's no room for God in it. No room has been dedicated, no time has been allotted for God, for the, for the worship of God. No time has been, or no finances has been allocated for God. Nothing has been done when it comes to God. We're only fascinated by ourselves, our needs, our goals, our aims. Listen, whatever you carve out for next year, put God into it. But the Bible said something. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. So here we go. We're going through Rahab, and we're going to go through some powerful principles. We are on the Rahab roll, and we're going to look at those principles to guide and guard ourselves for the year that is coming. See you later.